Hi guys, we're here at Earthy Birds Home Garden, where uh, Dion and Chad, where we both live. And so Chad's gonna walk you through kind of our home setup. So in this front area, this is the front of the house. We have these two beds in the front. Um, that are actually kind of really nice. I really enjoy these. The first we got to use them this year. Uh, we got tomatoes back here. This one's uncaged because it really wanted to kind of reach out for the sun because I put it too far back just because I was experimenting a little bit with it being the first season we've grown at. Uh, I got some parsley, some chard, uh, a little bit of lettuce, different like five different varieties of lettuce up in the back, uh, some spinach, uh, some big sunflowers, some, some red lettuce down here, really nice pretty color. Uh, then we got a tomato that is caged up right here because it's far enough up. Um, lettuce all the way in the back. This is some cinnamon basil tucked back in here. Uh, and this is kind of just like our our lettuce bed, I guess, our salad bed. Uh, we've got different herbs, got some sunflowers, eventually we'll have some sunflower seeds for, for salads. Uh, this is an avocado tree that we've had going for like three years now. It's growing pretty slow, but it's got some new growth. Um, up here is kind of our vining area where we got a bunch of squash, uh, mostly squash, like one bean. And this squash, is not looking great because these tomatoes were not caged up as they are now uh, so they were all kind of covering that so it was getting kind of abused but now that they're caged up it's parking back to life these two tomatoes are really tall so how uh, how many tomatoes do you think we have grown over here it's really hard to say but i mean like a couple dozen at least you see they kind of come in bundles like five or six and there's a couple of bundles in there but like six or seven bundles oh, yeah. Um, this one, this tomato in particular, I've had some problems with what they call blossom end rot. This is a good example of it right here. This is just the very start of it. But it's due to a calcium uh, deficiency, so I've been trying to add some calcium, uh, some liquid calcium food to it to try and perk it back. Um, once again, got another little experiment of a tomato back here, seeing how, how well a tomato would do that far back in there. Uh, sunflowers, and then another good sized tomato over here, as you can see. These tomatoes are looking really nice. So what kind of tomato is this? These ones are bigger. Uh, this is a super steak tomato, and I think those are a cherry tomato and then a Roma tomato. Okay, nice. And this is another uh, squash that there's three or four, five squash plants in there. And the reason they're yellow is because the roots are all trapped together and they're not getting the nutrients they need. And do we have any squash hidden, hidden down here at all? Yeah, there's one really good size one down in here. And you can see they're all starting to produce. The squash comes, you see it flowers, and then the squash grows right at the bottom of the flower. The flower eventually breaks off and your squash will continue to grow. Okay. So this is a good representation of our front garden. Yeah. Why don't we uh, take a look in the backyard? And most of our plants were either started at the center and I bought them from Earth and Birth or I sprouted them inside in seed certain containers or inside the, the house. Well, I've spent a lot of time back here lately just because this is an ongoing experiment of mine but I've had this coming for a while. This is a deep water culture bucket for hydroponics. You can see all those nice roots that go into a bucket of nutrient-rich water that has an air pump in it and air stones and it cycles that water up to the roots and the, the tomato really does well. It's actually starting to flower now because I gave it some bloom nutrients. So is this an example of hydroponics? Yeah, this is one example of hydroponics in what they call a deep water culture bucket and this is another version of hydroponics in a drain and fill system. And this has smart pots with normal pots filled with uh, and expanded clay pebbles and it fills every 15 minutes and drains every 15 minutes and kind of the same concept this is the basin full of the nutrient rich water okay and this is an example of the seed start trays that i spread most of everything in these are some uh oil burgundy beans some pepper plants and then some turnips and then over on this side you can get a good view this is kind of our second vining area, mostly melons instead of squash. And you can see this good sized melon coming in. This started growing, I think, four days ago, and it's probably growing 20% size every day, just kind of growing real fast. Um, there's another one 
kind of right there. I'm not sure if you can see it. Right in there. And it started about that same size and then progressively grew pretty fast. Mostly melons, some strawberries, uh, some mint. Okay. And you can see our chickens right there. towards the chickens and the chickens are highly anticipating that that day that they can finally get a bite of some melons. <laughs> uh, this is kind of our circular area around this tree which Dion did such a good job of tilling up. Um, we've got okra over, over here, one beautiful sunflower that has all these heads that are about to open up once they get a little more mature and bigger. Uh, a bunch of okra, I think that is, I think that's a some kind of cantaloupe. Cantaloupe with squash, I'd say. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly anymore. We planted so many. Yeah, this is some peas. You can see I'll go ahead and I'll just break one of these off. Go ahead and eat it and see how it tastes. Just see this beautiful, nice peas. Looks healthy. Really sweet. Really good flavor. Oh. It's all you. Yeah. Um, okra again. Okra again. Do we have any okra coming up? Oh. Oh yeah, wow. that's almost ready to harvest actually. Just a couple more inches on there and I'd, I'd take that off. Nice. And that's a spineless okra, which is really nice because it doesn't have those burrs on it that are really annoying to deal with. So it lacks confidence? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is corn. I think it's a, you say, you planted a butcher corn? Bloody butcher, yeah. Bloody butcher corn, so it's gonna be like a nice red corn. Mm -hmm. More okra, corn. Um, when it comes to companion planting, I'm not sure how great we did when it comes to planting. I, I mean, I know okra and and pea, their peas don't do bad together, and okra and corn don't do bad together. But uh, it was kind of just fought by the seat of our pants kind of thing, mm -hmm. just planting where we wanted to. Trial and error. Um, this is an example of a pea that just is not doing great, but if this is at the right stage, you can break this open, and you can see these peas don't look like the other nice round fresh green peas that are kind of dried out yeah and I'm going to attempt to sprout these I'm not sure how mature they are but that's pretty much a pea seed is I'm hoping that I can germinate those and get them to produce a whole new plant so even though this plant we didn't get a harvest off of to eat we might get a harvest off of the seed for next season okay so I guess uh, that's it for the backyard garden huh nothing else and we have this nice area over here as well Oh, you, get a, wow. you get a sneak peek of the sub-irrigation system that I'm trying to design for our new product. Tell us about that. Um, so this is going to connect to a hose right here, and this is going to be for a raised bed, or you could do it for an in-ground bed as well. Uh, but it's really just a PVC pipe system that has holes drilled throughout so that you can turn the hose on, and you can put plant food in here. I don't know if I can get that open right now. Yeah, so you can put plant food in there, liquid plant food or solid plant food and turn it on and it'll cycle that kind of through your bed at a sub-irrigated level, meaning it's at your root level. So instead of just pouring plant food on top, you can actually get that plant food to the roots of your plant and have it utilized that season, rather than having it break down and actually have to get in the soil first. Okay, but, so what uh, else we got going over here? This is, these are hot lemon peppers. This one, you can see a little guy coming in right there. Mm -hmm. This is another hot lemon. But you can see some, some other ones right in there. Got like six or seven on there. Uh, this is a black crim tomato, which I heard is a Russian variety of tomato, but I'm really excited for them because they're really Ooh. pretty looking and they're supposed to taste pretty good. We got a bunch of those coming in. Like a real bunch. There's a good, good so is cluster it, right is there. Is it American to eat Russian tomatoes? I think so. <laughs> tomatoes are pretty American food. Uh, this is a pepperoncini pepper. You can see all those nice peppers looking really good. And those are going to get yellow, not red. So. They don't have as long to wait. Um, kind of cool. One thing about reusing uh, seed spreading containers that I've learned this year is when you sprout one thing and then you sprout something in the same stuff afterwards and you didn't have a, a great germination rate, those seeds are still in that soil. So I had some basil that I sprouted and then I sprouted uh, other stuff afterwards. And when I transplanted the tomatoes and the peppers, I somehow got a bunch of basil plants that just popped up with them. You can see like eight or nine of them around there. Okay. And these are Honey Delight tomatoes. So they're like a yellow cherry tomato. And that's another one. And you can see 
this is the same variety of tomato, but there's this is obviously much bigger. And even though there's three on top of each other that I didn't didn't really notice when I transplanted, but this one's just not, not getting the right amount of sun because this bush. That little bit of difference of that that coverage can make this one do a lot better than this one. And then the last thing is we got our beginner compost pile back there. Okay. Awesome. So is there is it too late to uh, get started on someone's on someone else's garden? Uh, I wouldn't say it's too late. It's too late to start by seed for most things. Uh, but it's the perfect time to plan for a fall season. And there's, since we live in Oklahoma, we have four, or, yeah, we have pretty much four seasons. So I mean, you can garden all year round. It's just going to matter of how you're going to do it and what you're going to grow. Uh, but we can definitely help you get started for prepping for next season. Or if you already have something going, we can get you seedlings and stuff like that. That uh, if they're pretty mature seedlings, then you're not starting too late. But it is, it is getting to that point to where you need to. Uh, Either you're thinking for next season or really making a move on it. So okay. if you want a garden evaluation, give us a call as soon as possible. <laughs> All right. Dream big, act bigger. Yep, dream big, act bigger.